गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर इज इंडस्ट्रियल सिकनेस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल सिकनेस वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इंडस्ट्रियल सिकनेस इज इट हैज बीन ग्रोइंग फ्रॉम द लास्ट डिकेड मेनी ट्रेडिशनल एंड मॉडर्न इंडस्ट्रीज आर नाउ बींग इफेक्टेड बाय इंडस्ट्रियल सिकनेस परसिस्टिंग प्रॉब्लम्स आर बीन फेस्ड बाय द इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर ऑफ द country the problem of sickness has adversely affected the health of industrial sector in particular and the economy in general so whenever there is industrial sickness in an economy it affects the particular industry in which it is happening and it affects the overall growth of economy also so it goes both ways to a layman the meaning of industrial sickness is related to the sickness of a unit which is not healthy as you can read here to an investor it is the one which skips dividend to an industrialist industrial sickness is related to a unit which is making losses to a banker industrial sickness is related to a unit in which which has incurred cash losses in previous year and likely to repeat performance in current and following years now coming to the definition of a sick unit it is that which incurred cash losses for one year and is likely to continue incurring cash losses for the current year as well as for the following year and the unit has imbalance in its financial structure now we will study various symptoms warning signals of industrial sickness first point is shortage of liquid funds to meet short term financial obligations second point is decreasing rate of return third point is under utilization of capacity it is related to resources machinery and other manpower etc fourth point is accumulation of excessive inventories when we start gathering a lot of inventory and without even realizing how much is the optimum level of inventory we should keep to make our resources circulating in circle and it does not get stuck at one place we will study now various causes of industrial sickness so first of all causes of born sickness first is wrong location the location of the industrial unit has not been properly selected and that has lead to industrial sickness second is technological factors as we all know that technology is upgrading itself on day to day basis and it is the responsibility of every company to grow itself according to the need of the hour in this competitive scenario third is inexperienced promoters fourth is investment in unproductive capital assets so investment knowledge should also be there because if we don't have that knowledge we won't be investing our money in proper locations in proper assets and that can lead to industrial sickness fifth is long gestation period now coming to causes of achieved sickness first is in internal causes second is external causes we will study now the external causes number 1 is power cut it is related to electricity lack of power electricity support shortage in electricity it is also a cause second is erratic supply of inputs shortage of raw material lack of transportation facility high price these are all erratic supply of inputs 
third point is demand and credit restraints under this we have four sub points no equal balance of demand and supply lack of credit facility storage expense change of out of fashion so these are coming under demand and credit restraints fourth point is government policy very important point change in government policy can also be a cause of industrial sickness then lack of government support plays a major role in increasing the chances of industrial sickness high authority to large unit it is also a major cause now coming to internal causes first is fault at the planning and construction stage this includes wrong location area absence of market analysis unbalanced capital structure second point is financial problems this includes unable to pay finances lack of financial support from banks and financial institutions we all know that whenever we are undergoing a business venture we need financial support from banks and various financial institutions in case such support is not being provided that can lead to financial problems third point is defective plant and machinery lack of technical and professional skills lack of technology lack of efficient machinery high maintenance fourth point is entrepreneurial incompetence lack of market knowledge lack of insufficient professional skills lack of innovation then come management problems it includes inefficiency of management and lack of expertise the people at higher positions must have effective management skills they should have proper expertise only then the industry can grow in our business world then comes labor problems this includes lack of inefficient labor lack of coordination in work unsatisfied labor so labor problems are also a major cause of industrial sickness we should have efficient labor there should be proper coordination at work and the labor should be happy and satisfied only if the labor is happy and satisfied it would work with full motivation and that would lead to increase in productivity level and when each worker will have higher productivity level the overall productivity of the organization will increase as we can see here students industrial sickness is growing at an annual rate of about 28% and 13% respectively in terms of number of units and outstanding number of bank credit it is estimated that as of today there are more than 2 lakh sick units yes it is the fact that the magnitude of sick units is increasing day by day and this is a problem for economy with an outstanding bank credit of above rupees 7000 crores nearly 29000 units are added to sick list every year so starting a business venture is one thing but keeping it afloat without getting sick is another thing so we need to be conscious and have help at every level of our business venture as you can see there are some top states in term of percentage of sick enterprises kerala 21% tamil nadu 11.41 up 8.71 and so on punjab is also also mentioned at 3.93% of sick enterprises now we will study the effects of industrial sickness how industrial sickness affects what are the various consequences first is unemployment whenever there would be a shortage of resources in the company in industry 
and it is leading to sickness it will be very much necessary for it to leave lay off or retrench its employees and it would lead to unemployment and such cases are not beneficial for the growth of any economy second is second is wastage of resources industrial sickness leads to wastage of resources and it is also not a positive sign for economy's growth third is loss economy and government when industrial sickness increases the loss is incurred by government and it disrupts the growth of economy fourth is loss of banks and financial institutions as we have discussed earlier also that whenever business ventures are started or are going on they need help of banks and financial institutions they take credits and when it is a case of industrial sickness there is always a loss of money and that money has been taken from borrowed from banks and financial institutions so these institutions bear the losses and last is fifth point is industrial unrest instability stage arises and that leads to unrest in industry as you can see here sickness in msme sector in india in 1998 total msme units in lakh 89.71 sick units 2.21 so percentage is 2.46 the percentage is continuously fluctuating the data is till 2011 but as you can see the total msme units are increasing though percentage of sick units is fluctuating but it is very important to understand that to keep your company afloat you must be very much aware about all the things related to it in this competitive scenario now here are some suggestions to prevent and cure industrial sickness first one is proper project planning students planning is the first and foremost step in creation of anything it can be a project it can be any other thing when we do proper planning our half job is done so proper planning includes location of project where the project should be situated availability of raw materials how much raw materials are required from where we will get the raw material etc availability of labor and technical staff and availability of finance at reasonable rates second step is proper market analysis until and unless you don't do proper market analysis you cannot think of succeeding in any business venture so this includes demand forecasting how much is our demand who are the people in our market how we will sell to them and how they will use what is the intensity of their usage all these things are under demand forecasting then study of opportunities and threats of environment then consumer tastes and preferences what is the preference of our consumer what are their likes what are their dislikes then availability of old reliable distributors so these are the these people are the backbone of our company then third point is soft loans for sick units avoid over capitalization so these are some of the suggestions to prevent and cure industrial sickness where are there are some various measures taken by banks we will study these measures first is giving adequate working capital when there is shortage yes they do so they help the sick industries second is recovery of interest reduced rate third is defining the special cell in rbi fourth is arrange the special committee of state level in local branch for link between the financial institution and government agency 
Now policy framework of the government. First is SWOT analysis of industry. SWOT means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So we are trying to understand each and every aspect of industry. Second is liberalization of SEC unit. Now coming to the concessions by the government, how they are helping. First is giving high facilities to large industries to take over the small sector for revival. So government is taking care of small sector by giving opportunities to large industries to take over them. Second is high liberalization in terms of financial rather than intervention. So they are giving more and more rights to them. They are giving them more liberal approach. Third is introduce the scheme for sick industry. There are various schemes which are being provided by the government to sick industries. So students, this was all the concept about sick industries. We studied the introductory part. We studied the definition part. Then we studied various causes, how they can be corrected, what is the role of government in it, what is the role of financial institutions and banks in it. And industrial sickness is never a positive step for any economy. And we must take proper steps to overcome it in this competitive scenario. So students, this was all about industrial sickness. If there is any doubt, you are most welcome to ask me. Thank you very much.